um, put the chat up on screen so that Mix those High YouTube shows up. We're going to be listening to Blue and Exiles Below the Heavens. This is from 2007. Um, but I remember from that one song that I have already heard a couple months ago during one of the streams that it did not sound dated at all. At least that one track that I heard. And I was very surprised to find out um, how old this album actually is. So I know nothing about this album beyond that it has a really cool cover art and um, it's about an hour long, 15 tracks. So I'm just really excited to j just get into it. I've heard only good things about it and see, uh, see how it sounds. Um, so if you're watching this on YouTube, follow me on Twitch, catch these streams live. You get to see these reactions uncut. Um, if you don't want to do that and you're not really active on Twitch, you can also become a patron and watch these videos uncut um, before I post them on the YouTube page. So with that said, support the channel any way that you see fit. And we're going to jump into Below the Heavens. The first track is My World Is. I just noticed the sample is, is saying blue and he's going my name is blue you can call me blue and I won't stop until my world is and then I, I, I missed that that I part of the sample oh thank you I do my world is blue yeah oh so the sample is just saying my world is blue oh my god it's so so good it goes down I'm gonna be sinking with my penmanship just like a captain and you can only imagine how much passion that I put real quick let me talk about that intro bro oh my god he he spazzed on that uh like Mixo said, it starts off so mellow, and suddenly that crazy drop comes in with the nasty samples um, out of left field. Like it's it's so heavy the way that it comes in, um, in the best way. Like it, it's just completely uh, unexpected. I love the way he's going and he's flowing on this track. Uh, so much confidence, so much charisma. Honestly, the people um, will know the truth, and the truth is. What is the truth? Truth, truth, truth. <laughs> what is the truth? Blue. Blue's the truth after that first track. The narrow path. Loving these beats. City, so we're blinded by the man made bright lights, making my eyes shifty, fill me out, hear me now, crying childs of the ghetto, letting go. The mix on this chorus is a little weird. <laughs> The vocals are sitting a little far back in the in this mix, but I like this beat a lot, man. But I don't want to hear just this for five minutes. You know what I mean? Because I'm just not the type of person that you can you can hold me with just lyrics for five minutes. Like I need I need something interesting beyond just the lyrics to listen to. I, I focus very heavily on, on how the beat sounds. And if I'm listening to the same beat on a loop for, for that long, it, it's very easy for me to start zoning out. Watch for lots of diamonds. I've been fooled by the word a few times. Who cares if blue rhymes about holes to save the souls? They want to hear that beat ride. I read hmm. to play I'm going to pause it right here because I think the rest is just the hook. There's only like 40 seconds left. Unfortunately, it's, it's just the, the same beat on a loop for five minutes while he raps over it. And uh, I'm not mad at the beat. I think it's really, really good. But I don't want to hear that on a loop for five minutes, unfortunately. Um, but again, super charismatic performance, very dope lyricist, a uh, great flow. 
you know, and I'm, I'm coming to expect that from him. Because I remember thinking the same things when I heard uh, a song previously, a couple months ago. So um, I'm expecting very soulful production. I'm expecting, you know, these great performances. But I'm looking at the lengths of some of these songs in the track list, and it makes me a little worried. Like four minutes and 40 seconds, three minutes and 45. Not terrible. Four minutes, four and a half minutes, four and a half minutes, four minutes. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, it's just slightly above where I'm comfortable with most of my music. But, um, I mean, we'll see what it sounds like. Simply Amazing, Steel Blazing. Exactly. Uh, Dustin. Especially with the sample scratching. I'd never own an NFT. Yeah, it's, it's a very nostalgic sounding beat. 100%. The synths, uh, not the synths, the strings particularly for me. They sound like something straight out of like a classic, you know, 80s or 90s movie. Exactly, Dustin. It's just like, it's just the kick and the snare. This beat's the most underwhelming, I think, so far. Yeah, I think that one also goes on for too long, man. The beat is, is not captivating enough there to, to keep us in, interested for as long as that track goes on for. Some moving perks would hit? Yeah, I think so too. I mean, this even for something that was made in 2007, like the college dropout has bouncier beats and it was made in you know 2002, 2003 when it released. Um, so that, that even the how old it is is no excuse. Um, this beat just feels a little too empty. Melodically, it's nice. I like the subtle you know, keyboard in the background uh, with those really higher pitched strings. It's nice. It sounds cinematic. It sounds uh, moving, but the drums just aren't really doing it for me. Um, I mean, his, his performance is very consistent and I have no qualms or, or complaints about it just yet. But yeah, that beat really didn't do it for me. The Rose Melody is very nice. Yeah, that's a, yeah the, the chord progression there was really sweet. Yo, this bass line's already so cool. A little bit like Jay Electronica, his vocally, maybe. I can hear it, yeah. This is not the first track, this is the fourth. Yeah, eventually I'm going to build this out into the new studio. It's going to be less reverberant, etc. Yeah, that one's almost over too. Um, again, nothing inherently wrong with it. Nothing bad about it. It's just not grabbing my attention, you know? It's not something that I feel like, okay, I really want to come back to this song. There's no, you know, catchy hook. There's no, um, nothing in the beat that like stands out to me as something that I have to come back to. But yeah, after such a high flying first track, these other tracks just don't really live up to it. And um, I have to be real. I want to like it because I've only heard good things, but. I'm a professional athlete, so you know I'm good. Thanks, Revenge. I want to like it because I've only heard good things about it, but I got to be real, man. If I don't feel like I'm going to come back to a track, I got I to gotta say that, you know? So, um, like I said, there's nothing bad about it, but it's just not really holding my, uh, my attention. Uh, I'm going to move on to In, Rem In Remembrance. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of Kanye vibes here, so yeah. Great storytelling here, man. I feel like this one would be nice in the car as you're driving around. Maybe not sitting alone, you know, in a bedroom. 22 and making this, this kind of music is crazy, though. I still got a couple seconds left, like 20 or so, but the song definitely feels like it should be over by now. Um, not a bad song at all. I love that little that little sample. He, uh, you know, it's 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 a touching song. It's it's more personal, and so he's he's got a, he's not as as confident. He's not as um, not confident, but he, that bravado he kind of sheds it a little bit. 
for this track because this, this song is not about that. You know what I mean? It's, um, I mean, it's called In Remembrance. You know, he's talking about his family. He's talking about some, some members of his family who have passed. He's, he's sort of reminiscing on, on this one. And um, yeah, so he, he kind of shed his bravado for that one. And, and the beat ended up kind of carrying a little bit. But towards the end, feels a little too long. But really, you know, this one feels like one of those tracks that's so personal to him that he just kind of like had to make it. Um, so I respect him for putting it on the album, 100%. Blue Collar Worker. Oh, this one's cool. See, this one has got the catchy hook. This one's got the, the fun, happy sounding uh, sample chops. It's got the soul. It's got the bouncy drums. This one's one of those ones that I could definitely see myself coming back to. You know what I mean? Yeah, put your meat in the chat. That's uh, that, that's what he says he doesn't eat. You know what I mean? So I, I got to get a, a meat emote, huh? The meat emoji is not going to cut it. Because eventually I want to put the emote wall, like, right here, so that all the emotes you send in keep floating around on screen. And uh, I just, I need, a, I need a bunch of meat. You know what I mean? Just like, no vegans in the chat. This one's got a lot of the stuff that I was looking for. So I like this one. Catchy track, bouncy beat, cool performance, solid outro. This is a W. So this is Dancing in the Rain. This hook is very J. Cole, bro. The guitar is so good, bro. I feel like those are the highlights of this, this album, is really his lyrical ability, I guess, because a lot of the beats are cool but repetitive. <laughs> Thank you, Dustin. <laughs> I appreciate the bits, man. Yeah, it's really not a bad storytelling track. I feel like the, the I mean, it, it lingers for a little too long. It overstays its welcome just a bit. But my favorite thing about that is definitely the, the melodies and the beat, man. The guitars, um, so fire. Really, really cool. First things first. Whoa. Thank you for the bits there. <laughs> Thank you for the bits. I appreciate you, Dustin. Add the moment to the video. One hundred percent. I will. I have to. Bro, the 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 guy screaming, the fuck you say to me, you little shit, out of nowhere kind of scared me, man. These these sound effects come out of left field, huh? This one kind of rides a little bit. A lot of these tracks, I feel like, wouldn't be uh, so kind of long and hard to listen to if they were played in a different setting. Yeah, this is definitely a vibe. Oh, that one's kind of cool. Straight up is cool. Yeah, that one's a vibe. It's also not a, not extremely long. This one's a, a cool one that you could play in the guitar. In the guitar, no, in the car. This one's a cool one that you can play in the car. But I like the guitars a lot. I like the hook. On this is a special one. I bet you weren't expecting it to go on for as long as it did, too. Um, yeah, no, but that last track was cool. Definitely got it like a, it's almost got like a 21 questions sort of a vibe. You know what I mean? Uh, sort of a bounce to it. It's, it's really not bad. I like that one. Greater Love. I mean, I'm, I'm zoning out, man. I find myself zoning out. I mean, I mean, 
if I'm being honest, if I'm zoning out, I'm bored. You know what I mean? The, the, I like the beat. I like the sample a lot, but I can't sit down and listen to a, an entire album that's heavily focused only on lyrics for over an hour, man. I, I start to get super easily distracted. Um, let me skip ahead on this one a little bit. Thank you for the bits, Dustin. I appreciate that a lot. I do. I really do. <laughs> Had to zone you back in. I appreciate it. That's a wake-up call. But um, yeah, no, no greater love got old about halfway through. You know, I really liked the beat a lot, but the sample was cool. But um, yeah, and no, not knocking his lyrical ability at all. Like I said, his lyrics are probably the highlight on this entire album. It's just for me personally. Um, super lyrical albums that are on the longer side, I can't really listen to them all in one sitting. It's just not the way I like to listen to music. So this is purely a subjective take. Don't take, and I'm not trying to be objective. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to, I know objectively this is like a moody track and he's, his storytelling is on point, and, but I'm being really subjective. I don't really enjoy sitting down and listening to heavily lyrical music for, uh, for as long as I have been because it's very easy for me to zone out. So you know, that, that's my issue with it. Um, and it, it is my issue with it. Because I know that a lot of people think I'm trying to be objective. And then they, they hit the comment section immediately saying, I have no idea what I'm talking about, etc. All right. Uh, good life. I got, you got to love the Titanic flute. It's always a W. <laughs> From my girl last week, she telling me about that time of the month and how we're many deep in debt, trying to figure how to feed a mouth that ain't got teeth yet. How the hell am I gonna show a child to be a man when I'm 20, 22? And he's asking me, What the fuck was I thinking when mommy's tummy grew? Was I scared? Was I getting prepared? Or did I show me? Won't somebody show me? It's a few things my papa wrote in the way she lost it. And I ain't mad at they secrets though. It's a hard sell to tell a young The sampling on this is creative. Get colder when the bit of elders who held us away from danger when the danger would have killed us. They never failed us, but they souls have peace and follow one. I'm I'm personally a fan of this one. Your dick small. <laughs> yeah, I like that they're just kind of like letting the beat ride out. Um, but I mean this track is over five minutes long. You know what I mean? We're at four and a half minutes right now, and no one's saying anything. They're just kind of like letting the beat go on and vibe into it, which I, I enjoy. But um, for the sake of the video, I am going to move on because uh, we still have a couple tracks left. So, Soul Rising. I feel like this reaction is turning out a little underwhelming because I feel a little underwhelmed by the album, but it comes with the territory. Drums hitting, I agree. W snare. Really hard sample, 100%. The sampling is the highlight here, man. This is great. I'm gonna just be real, dude. No track has lived up to the first one. The opener was the strongest track so far, man. That's always a little disappointing. Um, you know, you start off so strong, kind of brings our hopes all the way up, and then every single song after that just kind of doesn't live up to that. I don't know, man. Cold-hearted. That's a cool one, man. That's a cool one. It's not as long. Um, I mean, I could have used that, you know, Your that one. Small. Thank you. I could have used that one a little bit earlier in the in the album. You know what I mean? That one is actually pretty dope, and it came towards the end when I'm already a little underwhelmed. So I feel like my energy wasn't up where it should have been to hear that one. But I like that one. That's a good song. It just came way too late in this album, man. I commend you for your strength to make it through this album. I feel the same way you do about purely lyrical stuff. It's hard to listen to straight through. 
yeah, man, I have an appreciation for it, but I really like to take these really lyrical tracks one at a time because, I mean, I just don't have the attention span, you know what I mean? But we've got three tracks left, I think, although the last one is seven and a half minutes long. But uh, we're going to make it through. It's, it's going to be fine. Um, I just, my only worry isn't sitting through, you know, the album because I'm going to be here for at least another hour taking suggestions and shit like that, you know what I mean? And having fun with you guys. So I'm going to be here anyways. Being here and listening to the album is not the issue. My only issue is, is how it affects the actual video afterwards. I want it to still be entertaining to watch. It's that balance of like being honest and letting people know that you're not really enjoying yourself as much as you wanted to, but still you know, providing enough entertainment for them to stay on the video and not click off of it. It's a little tough. It, it's a tough balance to find, and I feel like I'm in my head about the balance in this video. I feel like I'm, I'm overthinking it. And so I'm just struggling to get out of my head a little bit for this one. But, um, you know, we're going to make it. It's just three more tracks, and then I'll stop the recording, and we'll, we'll have some fun. So, uh, Below the Heavens Part 1. Duddy, the stream has sound effects now. Check them out. Like, look at this beat. This is a W. Blue in exile, below the heavens. I think this is the one that I heard. Baby Rage. I love the sound effects just interpolated throughout the track, man. Thank you for the fifth, guys. W NOS interpolation? I agree. This is definitely the one that I've heard before. Um, yeah, I remember giving my opinions and really liking it the first time I heard it. Again, you know, the last two tracks have been fired, but they're coming at a really late point in this album, and I'm already disinterested for the most part. So it's, it's just unfortunate that we had to wait so long to, to get these, these tracks. Below the Heavens Part 2. Yo, take them up there. Swap your hands to it and shit. Yeah. Just flow with us right now, you know what I mean? Is this just him thanking everybody? Yeah, the beat's cool, but I'm not gonna listen to him thank people for almost four minutes. We're gonna play the last track called I Am. It's seven minutes and 20 seconds long. It's the last one. I'm gonna get through it. I don't really want to listen to it because it's of how long it is, but we're going to get through it. That shit is fucking trash, dog. Get the fuck off the airway. <laughs> that is so perfect. That's so perfect. Hey, hold on. My dog's barking. Have you Ali? Have you? Got a book. That same to the working for law firms and bitches I jock kept teasing me to my balls sons and I'ma hop on Instagram and look at some ass. Maybe that'll help me get through this. Look at some meat with the boys. That's a good idea. Let's find some meat. Oh the next generation of slaves make tapes that the recollection for ruining the image we invented. I remember niggas breaking and the women used to shake their I mean I don't really like this at all. The sample? I'm gonna skip ahead. Seven and a half minutes of that, please. Um, and I didn't dislike it. That's not what I mean to say. But I, I get it's fucking trash. Don't so get the fuck off the airway. Thank you, Dustin. I, I don't mean to say that I dislike it. Um, but I, I really wanted to enjoy this more than I did. I was expecting the production to actually hold my attention a little bit more. Having heard Below the Heavens Part 1 only before going into it, and then having that first track sound the way that it did, I thought I was in for something, like, ridiculous, you know? And it's like, some of the tracks do sound dated. I really wish that they didn't, but some of them do. Um, there's a really heavy emphasis on the lyricism on this album, and if you appreciate that sort of a thing, uh, then this is for you. And I appreciate it, but not in, not in this setting, not not all in one sitting. This isn't the way that I consume very lyrical music. I don't listen to 15 tracks one after the other. You know what I mean? Like, it's just not the way that I can, I can 
listen to music and still pay attention to what's actually going on. Um, this is a very subjective take. If you're upset by this, I, I apologize, you know, I guess, but uh, I got to be honest. I'm not going to say that I enjoy this just because I've only heard good things about it. Um, in a different setting, shuffled and in, you know, another, another playlist of mine with other songs mixed in between, this album's a W. It's got some really cool beats. It's got great lyrical performances. If, got, if I've got, you know, a couple other more melodic tracks laced in between these, then, we're, then it's a different story. But sitting down and listening to the entire album all the way through, I just didn't enjoy it as much as I wanted to, unfortunately. But no way. No way. Straight now we can ball. Now Try not be no key and stay open. Duddy. That shit is fucking trash. So <laughs> get the fuck off the airway. The timing is perfect, bro. I love this. This is so Don't good. Fucking bitch, I'm gonna fuck you. This is so good. You yeah, know, this is this is really good. Um, wait till Duddy finds the uh, Soviet national anthem bass boosted. That's below the heavens by Blue in Exile. I um, I'm in a much better mood now, to be honest with you. But um, yeah, um, you know, thank you for watching the video on YouTube. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Twitch for more insane moments like this. Uh, subscribe. Subscribe to the Twitch too. If you have Amazon Prime, you get a free a free sub every month. Send it my way. I really appreciate that support. Uh, drop a comment. Let me know what I missed, what you think about this album. Uh, disagree with me in the comments, as I'm sure you will, because I know that this album is basically universally loved, at least from what I've heard about it. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys later. Everybody stay safe. Peace out.